Alright guys, welcome back to another video, the much anticipated boss fight between the F-22 and the Su-57. Uh, Su-57 flown by my buddy Longshot, don't forget to check out his channel, video description, uh, video link in the video description, and the pinned comment. So this fight is going to be uh, obviously very important to jam the WES between these two aircraft, we're both firing high off boresight Fox 2s. These fights will not last long, I don't think. Um, you know, within a one or two turns, it'll be over. Somebody will be dead. Um, but, you know, we'll see how it plays out. We're going to do five rounds and see who's going to win, the F-22 or the Su-57. So, um, five rounds to claim victory here. Now, here's the merge. One circle with a lead turn and attempt to jam the Wes here. We're a little bit too far, actually, here. There could be possibility of a missile launch pre-flaring uh, in anticipation of that Fox 2 shot. And having some trouble with my locking here. He's going to get away with that one. He was too close anyway, really, for a Fox 2 shot. Here we go. He's trying to do his thrust vectoring bullshit on me here. Doing actually a really nice job there. A little bit of overspin. I think he did too much. And I might be able to turn around. Oh, he's got a Fox 2 off. No track for him. I got one. Fox 2. He should come out the other side burning. He did not. It didn't hit him. I got one more Fox 2. He's got one more. And I am pre-flaring. Here we go. Fox 2 from me and from him. And I hit him. Oh my god, I hit him. <laughs> and he missed me. Wow. I didn't think that would hit him. And there's the ejection. I see canopy, but no seat. There's no chute. His canopy came off, though. This is, uh, uh, oh, I think he was still in the plane.
So the F-22 obviously very dominant, everybody already knows that, but I think if there's one aircraft out there that can take the F-22, it might be the Su-57. Uh, but so far I'm off to a good start here, we got a 1-0 victory over the Su-57. Merge here again and I've made a critical mistake, that's called a Syrian lead turn. I lead turned him way too early, but he wasn't able to capitalize on it because he was too slow. And that's why lead turning is actually a skill, because you can mess it up. And if you mess it up, you end up in this situation. Fox 2 incoming, okay. No track. Fox 2 again. No track again. And he tries to put guns on. Missed there too, luckily. I've made some pretty aggressive mistakes uh, right off the bat in the beginning of the merge with this fight, so I don't have really good feelings about it. Here we go. I can maybe get a lock here. Still no lock. He almost shot me with guns. I just cannot get a lock on him. Turn around and face him. I might have to go guns with him. He's getting way too close with those guns every time. And here he is turning into the sun. That's going to be a serious problem for my Fox 2 here. I have a lock. Fox 2. I've missed. Oh. Failure. Oh no. Right into the merge here for round three. One circle once again, this time we're turning the other way. I did not serially turn him that time. I'm a little bit happier with that merge. Uh, Pre-flaring, so is he. Get this nose to fall down on top of him, that would be real nice. Lock. Box two. And it just missed him. bit of over rudder all right dodge that missile I kind of over ruddered the F-22 here failure. oh ACS failure oh no it's 2-1 for the Su-57 now that's not good He's doing really well in this fight though, but I think I can turn it around. I think I know what I'm doing wrong. I can turn this fight around, don't worry. The F-22 fanboys are going to be pretty pissed with me. <laughs> I'm not putting on a good show so far. Dude, the Su-57 is a pretty dominant aircraft, especially when you couple it with the Archer, uh, the high off boresight Russian Fox 2. It, it can pose some very, very serious problems. Um, here we go into the next merge. This is round four. And he's already got a Fox 2 off. Whoa. Just missed me there. Lucky. Oh my god, why is he so aggressive? <laughs> 
He's out for blood today. Fox 2 into the sun again. I shouldn't have done that. Kinda have him defensive here. Gotta be careful of his hell of mounted sight though. Fox 2 again. That looks like it's tracking that hit him. Nice. That's what I like to see. Alright, we are once again equal. That's 2 2. The next round's gonna be very important. Splash 1's 257. There's a shoot. It worked for him that time. <laughs> Boys, fifth and final round. Whoever wins this wins the, uh, I guess, the boss fight. Uh, hands are kind of sweating here, not gonna lie. There's the merge. Once again into the one circle, as we talked about jamming the Wes. The pre flaring. His Fox 2, that'll miss. Roll it over on him. I am slowly working my way behind him. You can see he's getting out in front. That's what I like to see. Lock Fox 2. Oh! Did that hit him? can't tell if that missile exploded above him, behind him, but it doesn't look like it hurt him too much. I got another one for him though. Fox 2, please hit him. Yes! There you go. Alright. That's it, he's going in. There's the ejection. F-22 victory. 3-2. Great fight. Alright guys, here we go with the TACV review. This is round 5, I believe, and I really just want to discuss jamming the WES, the Weapon Employment Zone, in uh, this video here, uh, in this TACV review. So, jamming the WES, Weapon Employment Zone, uh, you're generally going to go for a one circle turn uh, if you're doing that, because what happens is, let's turn off the labels, uh, if one guy turns this way, and the other guy turns this way, you have a rate fight. This is a two circle fight. And eventually one of you will bring your nose around and more than likely if the aircraft are somewhat equal, they'll both get nose on at around the same time. And you know, you can fire missiles and both of you will die. It generally results in a mutual kill uh, because you're so far away that the missiles have ample time to get a track and hit the target. So when you're jamming the WES, what you're actually doing is getting so close to the guy that you're min-ranging his missiles. And that means that by the time he gets a missile off, you can see here we're 1,100 feet apart, which is actually really close. And what happens in that situation is the missile comes off the rail, but you know it, it just cannot maneuver in time to get the hit, or it, quite frankly, you know, just can't get a lock. Um, like it'll come off the rail and it'll lose the lock immediately um, Especially if you couple that with uh, pre-flares 
as you see here. You see pre-flares. Um, a lot of this is due to, first of all, it makes it harder for the missile to identify the target when it comes off the rail. But also these newer missiles like the AIM-9X, they also, from my understanding, take an optical image of the aircraft. And if there's uh, flares coming off, it's harder for it to get a proper optical track, you know, to, to try to track the target, um, along with the heat signature problems that flares create. So there's a whole lot of reasons to be pre-flaring, as you see both of us doing here. And uh, very close to each other, you see me pulling my nose in to get even closer to him, and you see him basically doing the same thing. Like, we're really just trying to hug each other um, in order to not get hit by the missile. You can see his Fox 2 comes off and just doesn't track. It, I, I don't know, it turns away from me, it sees the flares. Um, the sun's over there, so I don't think that affected it. But the missile was just min-ranged. It couldn't establish a proper track and uh, go stupid. Uh, here we go into the next merge right here. And once again, pulling into the one circle again, you see him pre-flaring. And now you see me pre-flaring and Fox 2 from him. Again, min-ranged. Uh, it couldn't pull the G's necessary to come up here and hit me. So basically when he fires it, it already loses track and it just goes stupid. Um, nine, my 9X, because it's fired from an elevated position like this, actually has an opportunity and does hit him. This is the one that exploded above him that we didn't know. I didn't know if it actually hit him or what happened there, but um, tag view here says that it actually did damage him. So. Um, and that only would be because he was just a little bit too far away. He didn't quite min-range my Fox 2. And so he's going to get hit by that Fox 2 there, AIM-9X. And then he's pretty much damaged at this point, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I think this is why he wasn't really able to do anything from here. He was just too hurt. And uh, there's the Fox 2 to finish him off right there. Boom. All right, so in these... Uh, in these high off boresight or Hobbs fights, uh, jamming the Wes very jamming the Wes very important, and uh, it, it's of critical importance that you pre flare as well. Uh, if you can do both of these things, you can min range missiles. Um, you may actually have a pretty decent opportunity of surviving a merge like this and getting yourself a kill. It may even come down to guns if you both do a really good job of jamming the Wes. You'll end up with snapshot opportunities. So. Um, that's going to be the video for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Big thank you to Longshot for helping out with this video, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.